All the content contained in this webcast is for informational purposes only. The investments and strategies contained in this webcast may not be suitable for you. Please consult your own independent financial advisor before making any investment or trading decisions. Good morning, traders and investors around the world, and welcome to Thursday's edition of PremarketInfo.com, where we prepare you for the most important hour of the day, the first hour. Well, Dennis, uh, we got a little pop-up here in the spoos at 13.30.75, but uh, that didn't last long and made a low at 13.16. Yeah, we took out the lows there again, Joel. 13.20 we're trading right now, just down slightly. Uh, but this market's just not looking good. It's just slowly drifting down and starting to become concerning. That 1,300 number that you've been talking about isn't that far away now, Joel. Dennis, I was just going to mention that. You know, we talk about we talked about the 1400s for a long time, and you know they're going to get this puppy under 1300. They're not going to get it to 1320 and not run some stops there at 1300. I mean, that's just inevitable that it's going to trade down another 20 handles. Don't know if it's going to be today or not. Uh, what I'm going to focus on this morning is going to be 1320 and a quarter. That was uh, yesterday's low. We're bouncing around that area. If we do get any sudden sharp breaks below that area, I will definitely have some protective buy stops at that area because if the market can get back and hold that level, perhaps we'll make a run at the uh, at the Globex high. Uh, Dennis, uh, Walmart has shrugged off the bribery news and now is trading up two bucks in the pre-market. Nice lift for Walmart. They really beat on the revenue number. I was just watching that go by. Uh, it's trading 61.10 right now after closing 59.19. So getting a really nice lift here. I just have to disclose I do have a position on in Walmart. Uh, but looking here, just uh, that 61.50 area. You had multiple highs there in late March, early April. So I wonder if that could come into play to give you some initial resistance there. Joel. Yeah, we talked about when this stock got it, when just got the tar kicked out of it after the bribery Mexico scandal, and we kind of looked at it, and you know what what's you know what would be the overall effect on the stock in the long term. Lo and behold, uh, that stock got under fifty eight dollars, traded down to fifteen fifty seven eighteen. Really didn't give us a true double bottom that we like to see in the stock. Uh, but has now had a real nice rally right back into this gap area. Um, I'd be looking at this uh, at the overnight high, 61.35. Dennis, you got to believe that anybody that stepped up to the plate in Walmart and shrugged off that news that bought it, you know, anywhere from, you know, 60.24 when it gapped down on April 23rd all the way down to that 57.18 level. I mean, this is this is a gift. I mean, this is this is exactly what you wanted. Good earnings. Um, I'd expect some selling pressure into this stock. It's only traded a quarter of a million shares. Uh, this stock trades millions and millions on a regular day. So I'd look for that 61.35 resistance. Uh, and if things got really out of hand. Uh, 62, I'm sure there'll be some size there as well. Yeah, I kind of tend to agree with you there too, Joel. I will limit my comments farther just because I do have a position. Uh, limited LTD reported last night. So we have some retailers in the news. Um, 47 bucks is where it's trading right now. Uh, Joel will find the after hours low there for you where it got down to. I closed to 47.96. This one's a tricky one. Like I, I, I know we follow this uh, you know, quite closely uh, after the earnings. And often what I often see on this one is it starts going. If it starts going one direction, it can really get the momentum going. And it's, har and it's hard for the stock to really find support. Now, I'm not saying it's going to do that, but if it gets going in either direction, don't be surprised if there's some real momentum. This thing moves a buck or two in a hurry. Yeah, 45.81 was the uh, was the low uh, that it made, and it's got a nice bounce. Very, very spotty trades back up here to the 47.19 uh, level. Uh, as far as resistance, if this thing gets anywhere near 47 and a half, 48, Dennis, uh, we had all those lows in that area going back uh, in early April. So 48 will be a huge number on the upside. Uh, just the way I've been looking at the retailers lately, Dennis, J.C. Penney and Sears and Best Buy. I mean, all these stocks that were trading at good levels in February are now just getting beaten down bad so uh wouldn't be looking for any place to uh stick my head out to be buying this stock uh 
you know, support is major, major support is way down at 45.26. Speaking of Sears, they did report earnings last night too, Joel, and it is getting a lift in the pre-market. But just like you were saying, man, has that stock come back down to earth? I think you had this massive short squeeze happening from early February all the way into mid-March where this stock got up to 85.90. That was massively overdone. It was hard to really, you know, you knew it was going to come back in, but where the top was, who knows? And it's expensive, really expensive to short the stock too to, to the borrowing costs in that stock i think we're upwards of 30 or 40 percent back then i'm not sure if they're still that high but when you have borrowing costs that high it gets really expensive to short it obviously eventually the stock just succumb um got all the way down to 50 popped a bit now it's kind of you could almost argue if this holds uh yesterday's low of 50 52 you could argue a little double bottom there because the stock is trading at 55 bucks it's up four bucks on the earnings joel yeah, Dennis, uh, we got a high of 55 um, in the pre-market. Uh, you did have some real good resistance in the 54.20 level. Uh, we did break above that. Uh, we use that as support. If it falls back into that 54.20 below that, um, it could easily slide back down to uh, that 52 and a quarter, or perhaps yesterday's low at 50.52. Uh, on the upside, the next major resistance point is 57.24. But Dennis, you know I'm just not a fan of these, of any of these retailers. I mean, if it's if it's based on how much you know shopping I do, I mean these things would all be out of business. Yeah, I'm not a fan of a lot of these stocks either. Um, it's hard to short them, like I said, because some of the boring costs on these things are quite high. But owning them is you know almost a disaster a lot of times too. But they get these short squeezes and they do get these spikes. So uh, you never know where Sears is going here, a short run, but long run, I'm just not a fan of the stock either. Uh, Joel, J.P. Morgan, New York Times reporting that the losses have increased on that trade 50%. Um, obviously, you know, they're in some position that's just illiquid. They can't get out of it. Um, 35.05, so it's trained down another 40 cents. This thing keeps making new lows. If I go out to the weeklies, there is some support here in this 35 area. But, man, when you've got stuff like this happening, it's hard to really pick a bottom on something like this, Joel. <laughs> Thirty-four eighty-five, Dennis has been the low in the pre-market. Uh, you have a double bottom back in January at thirty, uh, thirty-four fifty-three and thirty-four fifty. So that will be my bogey today. I'll be looking for support at that level. Uh, you got a little bounce up to thirty-five twenty. Uh, obviously, someone didn't have a good feeling about J.P. Morgan on the close yesterday. As the stock closed exactly on the low of the day, big print, 35.46. That would be major resistance. Uh, just talking about this J.P. Morgan thing, and I, and I know you left it out of my weekly comments, Dennis, because I get a, a little bit carried away. <laughs> but I want to know who's on the other side of that trade. <laughs> because if, if I wanna, I'll be buying that company because I'll tell you I know what's happening right now, Dennis. Whoever's on the other side of that trade, whether it's a hedge fund or two hedge funds or three hedge funds, they are jamming it down J.P. Morgan's throat. They are just, they got a winning position going, and every time J.P. Morgan tries to get out, they're just slamming them. And someone knows what their position is. We don't know or what it's in, but they are just, they, they might destroy this bank. This stock may go to 30 bucks, Dennis. Yeah, well, that's what happens, you know. When you, your position is known by, you know, the other player, if they are, they're on the other side, they do, they jam it down. They'll keep putting pain in, trying, you know, to knock it down lower and lower, especially if they know you're caught in it and it's the liquid. So, completely agree with you. I don't think you can be picking a bottom in this until you know that they're out of the position. So, because it could get uglier. I mean, when it's increasing 50%, and what's it been, a week? You know, that's, you know, just a scary thought. Uh, who knows where the bottom is? Obviously, J.P. Morgan, you know, is a huge bank. Can It's, it's going to live. It's You know, it's not like this is going to put the bank out of business or anything. You never but. know, Dennis. I mean, what were people <laughs> saying about, hey, Dennis, what were people saying about Bank America when it was at 45, 50 bucks? Well, and that was a completely different animal, I think, though, Joel. I'm a bear, too, on the, on the stock. I'm on the same side as you. I'm just not quite as bearish as you are. You know, we had the financial crisis, housing, every bank was over levered and all the housing uh debacle in 2008 so that's what really put you know the it started you know with a couple bad positions and they, they were just the positions were too big obviously and then you had a perfect storm where housing prices really started to tumble
Rumble and just got ugly. I don't think that's going to happen here, so I think this is probably just, you know, it's some you know, liquid position. Eventually they will get out of it, but they're, you know, who knows what those final losses are going to be. So until you kind of know if they're out of the position, I'd sit on my hands if you're thinking about buying it. Yeah, and I'd also like to know the position because when they're out of it, I would definitely like to get in it. Oh, yeah, well, yeah that's <laughs> usually the end is when they wash out. If you could figure out what the actual position is. You can get in it by getting in J.P. Morgan. When they say they're out, maybe that's the time you buy J.P. Morgan. I want to talk about David uh, Einhorn here. Herbalife, he, was, or, uh, he had come out back, uh, I think it was uh, just a few weeks, or, or actually you can see the sell-off back uh, in, in early, uh, late April, early May. Uh, he was on a conference call, really questioning the company hard. There at that um, at that uh, I- Ira Sohn conference there yesterday, Einhorn was speaking, and everybody thought he's going to come out and say some bad stuff about Herbalife. He didn't say anything, and the stock spiked six bucks. I mean, this guy has power. Um, <laughs> he doesn't say anything, and the stock goes up. So it's crazy. And, and the other stocks he was talking about is uh, MLM, Martin Marietta Materials. He did mention that one, that, and obviously that stock got killed when he mentioned it. It's crazy that he can have this kind of influence on stocks, Joel. Yeah, Dennis, I I just would say that just stay away from these stocks. I mean, I, I think it's – and just don't take this out of context, but I think it's almost borderline criminal, you know, that he can move stocks and in, in things like this. I mean, who knows what his positions are, but if you have that much weight in something and you know you can move it by making or not making comments, I mean, it's just, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how the, uh, you know, the, um, the uh, authorities look at things like this, but uh, I don't know. It just doesn't seem right to me. Uh, looking at this um, Herbalife uh, from the uh, way it's been trading after hours, there's good support from 5056 to 5062. Uh, that spike when he didn't mention uh, Herbalife was at 5380. So I keep an eye on these parameters. But you know what he did to this stock and why people would react so you know so violently to what he says. Um, just just shows that the um the unsteadiness that we have in this market today. Like just to give you some background, if you don't know Einhorn, um, he was obviously the one that called basically the whole uh, Lehman Brothers uh, debacle back in the day. He was short Lehman Brothers, very vocal position back in the day. I can remember on CNBC, um, you know, he was coming on and the stock had went from you know eighty dollars down to thirty, and it was on CNBC saying. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I just don't, you know, like the stock. And they were trying to say, what, do you think it's going bankrupt? And he wouldn't say that, but he's like, he's like, well, we just don't like it and we're staying short. So, and I think, you know, for the most part, he wrote it all the way down to zero. So that's really what got him on the map was he was very early in the Lehman Brothers called it to a T um, and made a ton of money from it. And ever since then, every time he says something, everybody really, you know, jumps on board. Like GMCR, he was talking about Green Mountain Coffee there uh, back, um, you know, way back. I, I got to go even back to the weeklies here. But when it really started to break down around 80 bucks, you know, he had said, you know, they short the position and the stock just got killed. So he has a lot of influence. I almost argue whether he has more influence than anyone else out there. But crazy yesterday, you know, that, you know, these stocks can move around seven eight nine percent just just on his comments um the financials overall we should just talk about them like you got the european financials who are weak again um these things are just making new lows every single day ing is now trading 581 like we've almost got a full-on financial crisis going on over there in the u.s or or in in europe i don't really care what they say here on cnbc these (laughs) banks man these European banks are in a world of hurt right now. Like Barclays is down another 50 cents today, trading 11.53. They keep making new lows. And if these European banks really start to get into trouble again, it's got to start to, you know, hit our financials too. And our financials have been going down even before this whole JP Morgan debacle. I mean, Goldman Sachs, Joel, is now under 100 bucks. Yeah, I mean, we've... Tata, we're just not decoupled from them. I, I, the only thing I want to do without looking at these individual stocks or scaring people, but if these stocks are going to go back to their October lows, what's going to prevent the market to go, from going back to their October lows? What were the October lows on the S&P, just for our listeners there, Joel? Oh, boy, Dennis. We got down – I think this booze got down to 1050. 
I yeah, mean, of course, always, yeah, you always yeah you always roll the contract. Yeah. Um, so it's really hard to uh, to give it. But going on the monthlies, uh, you had the spike low. It was actually in August. You got to ten ten fifty nine seventy five in August, and then in October you came down to ten fifty six fifty. So yeah. that was basis the front month contract. I mean, you know, let's not get carried away here, Dennis. Uh, first, we got to crack. Uh, we we got to crack twelve or thirteen hundred. Yeah, and and I don't think we're going back there all the way to those lows. I don't think it's going to be another financial crisis. I don't think you know. I think you know. But we had a heck of a run. You got to really put it in context. The market ran up obviously from that ten seventy area you're talking about to over fourteen hundred in a matter of six or seven or eight months. So that is just an overdone move. This is, you know, obviously having the correction now. We're almost 100 points off the high. So we are having a nice correction here. Uh, but one stock to keep an eye on through this whole thing, and it's been, it was the driver driving us up, and it's what's weak now is Apple. Apple is down again today here, Joel. The chart does not look good on Apple. 5.42. We said when it cracked 5.55, you can't be long this thing. It's now 13 points below that level. I see a heck of a lot of air below here. Here, Joel, I think you got to sell rallies in this. What do you think, uh, Dennis? Uh, keeping an eye on 541.04, that was yesterday's low. You'll also find support probably that psychological 540 number. Uh, after that, it's straight down eight points to the March 8th, uh, March 8th low of 533.12. The next major level under that is 523.30. Folks, where else can you get uh, 30 points of downside numbers in uh, Apple except here on PremarketInfo.com? <laughs> uh, also, Dennis. Shameless uh, plug, Joel. Shameless it's plug. It's true, though, man. Who else, who else is looking at it? Shameless also, uh, plug. you know, not to you know break my arm, scratching my back, but uh, post earnings, when this thing shot up to 618, uh, someone uh, was a little bit skeptical here about them reducing guidance but uh <laughs> you had a good call on that one joel we'll yeah, you. you've been all yeah. over this apple ray from the hip-hop you were shocked that it went up 50 points and i will give you that if you go back and listen to the shows back then you didn't like the stock you thought you know that was probably if it went under 600 here you didn't want to be own it i mean it went under 600 and it's you know never looked back here so i will give you props you've been all over apple joel and I'm not ready to call bottom yet, but uh, just some other stocks uh, that we should keep a, keep an eye on. Uh, it looks like Chevron Corporation wants to fill that gap back from uh, November 29th. It had a gap between 98.05 and 99.50. It looks like it's going to work into that gap area over the next few days. Uh, if you want to sell IBM over 200, uh, you better you better do it pretty quickly. Uh, I know we're getting a little long in the tooth here with the show, Dennis. But uh, one other thing I wanted to mention as far as market performance and uh, potential triple crown winners. I know Joe Kernan made a comment, uh, but in 1973, when uh, Secretariat made its uh, gallant run, uh, the market was down 14.7 uh, percent, and now with the market being up 7 percent and shrinking every day. Uh, that would be an ominous sign for the market if uh, if um, I'll have another can win the Preakness. And, <laughs> Throwing and the I horse races back into the market there. <laughs> yeah, you got to do it. But that's our show for today, folks, and uh, we'll be back with you tomorrow.